kita sempat terhenti seperti jarum jam dinding yang tidak berfungsi. Ada mereka yang jatuh, ada mereka yang sakit, ada mereka yang kehilangan, ada mereka yang meninggalkan. Tidak satu, tidak dua, mereka pergi bergerombol dalam gelombang bernama kematian. Pandemi akan pergi seperti kabut yang hilang sebelum fajar. Asal kalian tidak membawa ego, bergerombol di sana sini, berhahahihi mengabaikan yang diatur. Sungguh elok jika kalian peduli atas nama kemanusiaan. Pakai masker, harga mati. Gak pakai masker, bisa mati. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, good morning to all our friends in the media. Uh, thank you for joining us today. And I think uh, this uh, a, a, a press conference will be moderated by Mbak Ismi from Nikkei Asia. Good morning. Morning, Pak Wiku. How are you today? I wish you I'm are fine. well. Thank you. I hope you are fine too. Thank you. Uh, may I start to uh, continue uh, for the okay, conversation? Yes, please. Okay, thank you. So, uh, as always, I will be updating you on the uh, recent COVID-19 management developments in Indonesia. And the COVID-19 situations in Indonesia continues to improve. And this is reflected in the positivity rate that continues to decline. And also the number of the testing and tracing that continues to increase. Nevertheless, uh, the government will continue to make efforts to control it as much as uh, possible. As long as COVID-19 is still in Indonesia, the government will strictly enforce PPKM by monitoring and evaluating uh, every week. And the uh, detailed revisions and evaluations are carried out every week, given that adaptive uh, policies are required to adapt to the dynamic conditions of the virus uh, circulations. Any policies undertaken will also rely on the later data to ensure maximum responsiveness. And now, here are some uh, additional trends seen in some countries when compared to global trends. The largest uh, contributor to the total number of positive cases in the world, namely the United States, is currently also experiencing the third wave or the third peak and the curve also seems to have started to slow down. The pattern of case increase in the United States is similar to the, uh, that globally, especially in January and September uh, 2021. The slight difference is seen in April 2021, while global cases witnessed a spike, the US saw a fall next in uh, Malaysia and Japan. These two countries have a similar pattern with global case pattern, with the three spikes mentioned above. And currently, while cases in Japan have begun to decline, Malaysia is still at the peak of the third wave. The anomaly case here is India. India experienced its first spike in case in September 2020 when other countries were yet to reach their first peak. However, when other countries started experiencing a spike in cases in January 2021, India actually experienced a decline in cases. Cases surged again in April 2021 and contributed to the highest number of cases in that period. The second peak has since declined and India continues to display a flat curve for uh, two and a half consecutive months, while other countries across the world experience an increase in cases. If we look at Indonesia's pattern, Indonesia first peak aligns with that of other countries across the globe in January 2021. However, when the world and other countries experience a second peak in April 2021, 
Indonesia was still experiencing a decline in cases. Later, when Indonesia reached its second peak in July, other countries and the world did not experience the same. Moreover, in this September, when cases in Indonesia continue to decline, the world case is still experiencing the third wave or the third peak. The second spike in Indonesia last July, which was not followed by a surge in the world cases, shows that although Indonesia experienced a significant increase in cases, it was not significant enough to contribute to the increase in the global cases. The spike in cases in Indonesia was also handled immediately as seen in the curve that shows a gentle slope, unlike other countries that are going through the third spike. We should appreciate this excellent development as it shows the resilience of our nation in the face of the COVID-19 pandemic. I thank the entire community, the health workers who are tireless in treating patients and the great cooperation between all regions heads in Indonesia. In addition, while Indonesia's population is similar to the United States, the latter is seeing a much smaller number of daily positive cases and the number of cases per one million population. In fact, this number is still smaller than neighboring countries whose population is far less than ours. So our main assignment now is to maintain this slope uh, curve. There are two lessons that we must note here. First, the key to maintaining this decline in cases is to seriously maintain health protocols in line with the reopening of community social activities. Mutant variants such as Delta have indeed proven to be faster in transmission. But we must note that despite the variant being found in India in October 2020, cases only spiked in April 2021. Same with Indonesia, where the variant was found in January 2021, but only spiked in July. It is clear that the spike in cases occurred not solely as a result of the Delta variant, but as a result of community social activities that are not in line with the implementation of strict health protocols. If we are able to limit the social activities, the impact of variant mutations will not cause a significant spike in cases. Second, by looking at the pattern of spikes in Indonesia three months apart from the spikes in the world, as well as India, Malaysia, and Japan, we must be vigilant and remain disciplined about health protocols so that we don't catch up with the third wave or the third spike in the next few months. We can learn from India as cases in this country have been flat for the last two and a half months, despite experiencing a significant increase earlier. Now, I will talk uh, about Indonesia's strategy in dealing with the second spike in cases seeing that we managed to suppress cases to maximum up until today. As per this week, national cases are on a decline for eight consecutive weeks. Cases this week have declined up to 88.9% compared to the second peak. In fact, this week's cases are lower than the first peak and is close to the lowest point that we experienced on the 10th of May. This development could take place because the government worked quickly to draft policies and all levels of society cooperated and adapted to the them with discipline. Steps undertaken are as follows. As soon as cases escalated, the government immediately set a policy for the enforcement of community activity restriction or PPKM which was followed by a stricter restrictions of PPKM level 1 to 4, which was implemented on July 26 until now. The government also regulated travel both domestically and abroad. The policy is evaluated every week through routine central and regional coordination meetings and will continue to be adjusted to the development of cases and dynamics that occur in the community. 
the rapid response to boost the readiness of health facilities also played a key role in dealing with the surge in cases. The number of beds in referral hospitals continue to rise and has reached to 116,939 uh, beds. Medical device supports such as for oxygen and ventilators are being fulfilled through equal supply distribution and donations of isotanks and, and also oxygen various referral hospitals. As for health workers, doctors, interns, and nurses who have not tested for the competence exams also joined in with the supervision of a senior nurses. Centralized isolation area were also used to reduce the burden on the referral hospitals, of which there were up to more than 20,000 beds in centralized isolation area throughout Indonesia. Testing and tracing were also main focus. Testing continues to be increased. It has reached nearly 1 million people being examined in one week, with the number of laboratories also on the rise. And currently, we have 796 reference laboratory in Indonesia. And to prevent a spike in cases, the vaccination rate will continue to increase to reach 10 million per 10 days since August 2021. And the government will continue to strive for sufficient national vaccine stocks and increase the coverage of equitable distribution of vaccines. As I said earlier, we have passed the spike in cases and currently our base, uh, big task is to prevent another spike in cases. The implementations of the PPKM policy needs to be continuously improved and the public should not be careless in implementing health protocols. For the record, last week there were 80 laboratories and, and also cities with low compliance in wearing masks and 95 districts and cities in keeping their distance. Supervision of health protocols is the key to preventing a spike in cases from happening again. I reiterate that the task force for village or Kelurahan command posts and also public facilities are important tools to support the implementations of health protocol supervisions. And currently, only about 41% of villages and groups have formed posts or POSCOs in Indonesia. And controlling the second spike in cases has been a great achievement and is the fruit of continuous learning. First, we were adaptive. We were ready to make updates if needed according to the real data on the field. Second, it was a comprehensive effort, meaning that all elements in the community have an important role as a form of shared responsibility. For example, the formation of task forces in villages and sub-districts and in every public facility. Third, it was a two-way approach, top-down and also bottom-up, where we tried to link the smallest control commands in the regions to the national level. With full confidence and optimism, Indonesia continued to make improvements to the implementation of various existing national COVID-19 control policy. And next, uh, I will convey the role uh, that Indonesia can play in handling COVID-19 globally. Indonesia is a large nation, and this is measured by the number of people in its area. 3.5% of the world population is a resident of Indonesia and as the largest archipelagic country in the world. Indonesia area exceeds that of Western Europe. These demographic and geographical characteristics are a challenge as well as a privilege for Indonesia in controlling COVID-19. The challenge is that Indonesia risks contributing quite a lot uh, uh, to the world given the population's density and the many entry points for migrants to Indonesia. However, if Indonesia is able to control COVID-19 well, it will have a major influence in controlling COVID-19 globally. Thank God for the grace of God Almighty 
as well as the hard work of the community and the government to consistently uh, control COVID-19 in several layers that has contributed to great results in terms of national COVID-19 cases. The layered policies include regulating international travelers, domestic travelers, and controlling people's activity at home, traveling, or when doing activities outside the home. Despite this excellent achievement, Indonesia believes that COVID-19 will not completely disappear in a short time. The dynamics are still there, considering that other countries are still struggling to suppress the rate of transmission. In order to prevent only temporary success in controlling COVID-19, the Indonesian government has compiled a roadmap, which is an anticipatory strategy and the basis for a new life order for the community that is controlled through dynamic PPKM policies according to the data and facts on the ground. This roadmap is not only created to suppress the transmission of COVID-19, but also to encourage controlled community productivity. In the future, the focus of the Indonesia government is to achieve a fatality rate of less than 2%, active cases of less than 100,000 cases, and a positivity rate of less than 5%. Based on the above, I will address the PPKM revisions in Java Bali area that will be effective from the next week as per the instruction of the Ministry of Home Affairs number 42 year 2021 for level two and three Theatres can operate with a maximum capacity of 50% without food and drinks in the vicinity and visitors below the age of 12 will be prohibited for, from entering. Operations will be integrated with the Paduli Lindungi system. For level 3, a health protocol trial for recreational places will be held, starting with the exceptions of visitors below the age of 12 and the implementations of the odd even system to and from the location starting from Friday 12 o'clock to Sunday 18 uh, o'clock of the local timing to prevent crowding. This trial operation will also be integrated with the Paduli Lindungi system and entry point uh, restrictions for international travelers will also be enforced with the following details. The air entry points only via Sukarno Hatta Airport and Samratulangi Airport in North Sulawesi, and uh, sea entry points only via Batam in Riau Islands and Nunukan Harbors in North uh, Kalimantan, and land entry points only via a cross border post or PLBN of Aruk in West Kalimantan and Antikong also in West Kalimantan and other technical aspects will be further regulated by the Ministry of the Transportation. And the addition of vaccine achievement indicators to determine levels per region, the requirement for changing the level three area to level two are at least uh, one dose of vaccine done for 50% of the general populations and 40% of the elderly populations, which is above 60 years old. And the requirements for the changing from level two to level one are at least one uh, or first dose of vaccine done for 70% of the general population and 60% of the elderly populations or above 60 years old. And each level two local government will be given two weeks to achieve this target. If it is not reached within the allotted time, then both will be designated as an area with level uh, three. In addition, vaccination achievements will be used as the basis for determining the districts and city level in the agglomeration area. And regarding vaccination as one of the pillar in controlling COVID-19 in Indonesia, last night, the central government at the command of the president officially made vaccination coverage per region a condition for reducing the regional level in order to increase national vaccination achievements 
which have exceeded 24% of the target set by WHO. In addition, the central government has also uh, involved various elements to oversee the distribution of vaccines to regions, including the Financial and Development Supervisory Agency, or PPKP, the TNI, or Army, and also the National Police. The government will maximize the vaccination target of 40% of the population in each country by the end of 2021, and then increase it to 70% of the populations in the middle of 2022, uh, uh, according to WHO, uh, WHO directives. In addition, in line with the president mandate, which states that Indonesia must participate in overcoming the vaccination gap between countries, the following steps have been uh, taken. Indonesia, through the Minister of Foreign Affairs, has encouraged the acceleration of global vaccination through increasing uh, vaccine productions by diversifying productions, expanding the types of vaccines distributed by COVAX, and the increasing the vaccination capacity of AMC, or Advanced Market Commitment, uh, countries, which are countries with the right to access vaccines of 20% of the total populations. This is a form of global solidarity to support the equitable distribution of vaccines. Indonesia is also committed to, and at least until the end of this year, only providing the third booster vaccines to health workers, assistant health workers, and supporting personnel who work in healthcare facilities as part of the at-risk uh, population. And as part of a long-term plan in establishing a plan to coexist with COVID-19, Indonesia also participated in the formulations of a declarations among G20 member countries and several other international bodies such as WHO, UNICEF, World Bank, and also Gavi. This declaration states that Indonesia is a country that is committed to making recovery efforts after the COVID-19 pandemic, collaborating with other countries in handling the pandemic, using the One Health approach for inclusiveness in handling interrelated human, animal, environment health, and providing access to pharmaceuticals and medical equipment easily and quickly. And to conclude, I would like to address a few things. Regulations stipulated in the Addendum of the Task Force Circular Number 18 of 2021 are effective from today. These regulations mandates additional provisions for international travelers and all transportation mode operators to, to use the Peduli Lindungi application and supervision uh, of provisions for cargo ships. These additions are expected to optimize the comprehensive multi-layered policy with a digital approach for more efficient uh, control. The Indonesian Food and Drug Agency has also provided an emergency use of authorizations for three COVID-19 vaccines that use the non-replicating viral factor platform. The three vaccines are, are Sputnik V, Janssen vaccines, and Confidencia vaccine. These vaccines are intended for people aged 18 years and over. And as for the dosage, the Sputnik V vaccine will be injected twice with an interval of three weeks or 21 days, while the Janssen vaccine and Confidencia vaccine will only be injected uh, once each. That's all for today, and we will now move to the media questions and answer uh, sessions. So thank you very much. Thank you, Professor. There are five questions. The first one is from Edward Davis, Reuters. Can you comment further on the conditions needed to open up Indonesia's borders with suggestions that November could be the timetable? Thank you. Thank you, Reuters. Um, I would like to reiterate that the Indonesia government's focus moving forward in achieving a fatality rate of less than 2% and less than 100,000 active cases, and a positivity rate of less than 5%. Regarding the schedule for easing movement in and out of Indonesia, 
it will be tentative depending on the case data and facts on the ground. In principle, policies will adapt to the virus that continues to evolve, as well as people and leaders who must ideally uh, be more reliable in handling emergency conditions. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Second question coming from Kate Lamberters. Is Indonesia ready if a more virulent variant starts to spread and have any new ones been detected? Thank you. Thank you, Reuters. Um, it must be understood that viruses always have the potential to mutate as it is completely a natural process. Not all mutations uh, carry a negative effect that most people are worried about, which is the increase in transmission rates. For this reason, if we only focus on the threat of variants without carrying out the main weapon for controlling COVID-19, it will lead to excessive fear. For this reason as well, the government on the basis of the cooperation and empowerment of all elements of society will continue to optimize the layered and tiered COVID-19 control policies to control COVID-19 such as regulating mobility and supervising the discipline of health protocols in all lines, which is in village or Kelurahan post, and also COVID-19 task force in Indonesia. And also in public facilities, accelerating vaccination and continuing to accelerate response capacity for 3T efforts, which is testing, tracing, and treatment. And in the future, as we coexist with COVID-19, the government is committed to continuously improving the quality of surveillance or recording of COVID-19 cases, increasing sequencing capacity, conveying information on the distribution of variants in Indonesia in a transparent manner, and being more anticipatory in detecting unusual cases in the field. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. The next question is from Vidya Pana, Embassy of Switzerland. Is the government considering loosening or giving flexibilities to the quarantine policy upon arrival to Indonesia, as it has been, among other things, a big challenge to the recovery of the tourism industry? Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Embassy of Switzerland. Uh, to date, International travelers are still mandated to quarantine for eight days as per the task force circular number 18, year 2021. Especially for foreigners holding diplomatic visas and service visas related to the official and state visits to foreign officials at the ministerial level and above, as well as foreigners who enter under the Travel Corridor Arrangement or TCA scheme with the principle of reciprocity will be exempted from having quarantine for eight days. This is in order to provide flexibility for state activities which are generally limited and occur only for a short period of time. Aside from that, we urge international travelers seeking entry to Indonesia to fulfill all administrative requirements in accordance with the applicable rules and regulations. In the future, it is possible that there will be changes, either regionally or nationally, as the accelerate and break principle in formulating policies will continue to be the main principle for shared welfare, safety, and health. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from Marshall Rumlaklak. Sorry for the possible mispronunciation from Marriott International. What is the plan to open Bali for international tourists, considering case numbers have gone down? Also understand that the G20 summit will take place next year. So do we see Bali reopen this year, or will it be pushed to 2022? Thank you. Thank you, Marriott International. Restrictions on entry for foreign nationals entering are still in effect as stimulated in the test for circular number 18, as I mentioned before, with exceptions for foreigners holding diplomatic visas and service visas, diplomatic stay permit and service stay permit, and limited stay uh, permit and permanent stay permit, and for health and humanitarian purposes, and the transport 
that come with their means of transportation, as stated in the ministerial decree of the Ministry of Law and Human Rights number 27, year 2021. And foreigners under a bilateral agreement or TCA scheme, and also foreigners who receive special considerations and permission in writing from special ministries or institutions regarding the operational plan of the G20 summit in Indonesia, we welcome the opportunity to host this prestigious event. Fortunately, Indonesia is at the stage where it is able to responsibly carry out of this event. And given that we have remained stable amidst the third wave trends since in other countries across the world, thus we can ensure that this event will be prepared for uh, as well as possible. Thank you. Thank you. This is the last question before the live Q&A session. This one is from Faris Shelki from Husky Energy International Corporation Rep Office, Jakarta. Will task force provide guidance for return to of office? Example, parameters to allow 100% work from office requirements for worker to enable working from office. For example, being vaccinated, get weekly PCR swab, etc. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Husky Energy International Cooperation. Um, in principle, the Indonesian government formulating uh, tiered and layered regulations to ensure that those carrying out activities are those who are truly healthy, including office workers. Thus, the government has come up with a task force at public facilities policy through task force circular number 19, year 2021, to guarantee compliance toward health protocols, which are to be implemented at all times. Further details are listed in the latest instruction of the Ministry of Home Affairs. And uh, I think uh, that's uh, what we can uh, respond to the uh, uh, questions from the media. If there is still other uh, questions, please uh, do so, and uh, I will try to okay. uh, respond. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much, Professor, for uh, responding to the question uh, submitted on prior to this event today. First, we have our own uh, GFCC Vice President, Wahyudi from Straight Times, okay. uh, asking again about the, the uh, you, you already mentioned, the, the, the only foreigners who have diplomatic or working visas are allowed to enter Indonesia. Uh, is there is there consideration of uh, level of vaccination, either it's first dose or second dose, that would maybe enable Indonesia to let uh, foreigners uh, enter Indonesia, especially for tourism? Yes, of course, uh, we try to ensure that the policy restrictions for international travelers who are coming to Indonesia is to make sure that they are uh, vaccinated either first dose or complete dose. But uh, of course, uh, not all people in the world right now have all privilege to be vaccinated, but we want to make sure that people who are coming to Indonesia are vaccinated so that uh, we want to make sure that there is no imported case. And uh, of course, we will be uh, reviewing our policies as uh, the uh, vaccinations continue to progress. Thank you. Okay. Just a follow-up question, Ismi, I'm sorry. Uh, yes, uh, please, Yudi. Uh, thank you, Prof. Prof Viku, for your time and for your hard work, uh, of course. Uh, ca can you elaborate uh, if uh, whether uh, vaccination coverage is a parameter? Uh, I, I, I mean to say, I mean to ask you that is there a certain level of vaccination coverage uh, first dose vaccination cough coverage that would trigger the government to start allowing tourists to come in. Let's say uh, if we reach 60% uh, vaccination coverage, uh, first dose, then that would uh, trigger Indonesian government to uh, allow foreign tourists to come in, not only uh, allowing uh, foreign uh, diplomatic uh, with diplomatic visas and working visas. Thank you. 
Uh, thank you, uh, Wahyudi. Uh, first, of course, we will focus on the uh, internal uh, vaccinations policy coverage to make sure that the people mobility in Indonesia are only for the people who are uh, vaccinated and proven healthy. So that's why we have the uh, a policy to ensure that. And we try to improve the uh, vaccinations policies and coverage in all uh, areas in Indonesia. But of course, we'll be focusing in with the high density of populations and with the potential uh, uh, high transmission. And right now, the uh, coverage is uh, relatively uh, improved and for the first dose and of course also for the second dose. And we will use that considerations, of course, to relax uh, some social economic activities, including to the foreigner. But of course, later, once we can assure that the uh, improve of coverage of vaccinations uh, across Indonesia are safe enough also for the foreigners to come. But not any now. For, any forecast on the time frame maybe you have or your team have on mind or have, have evaluated uh, when this might uh, happen possibly? Uh, probably uh, in the next year when the coverage uh, will reach at least 50 to 70 percent of for the second dose then probably we will consider to to open carefully for the f foreigners to come especially for the business purposes and probably uh, uh, limited tourism but for now uh, we still uh, uh, review our uh, achievement and try to improve as uh, fast as possible so is it fair to say uh, we are sticking to the second dose vaccination as a parameter, as a measure, rather than uh, first dose? Is, is first dose a uh, matter at all? Uh, what we uh, use as a parameter for preventing this uh, transmission is, of course, three approach. The health protocols, the 3T, and also vaccinations. In terms of vaccinations, the first line uh, protections, of course, the first dose. The second line protections is the second dose. So we want to make sure that all people who are active and traveling or mobility are healthy, including the foreigners who are or who will be coming to Indonesia. Thank you, Prof. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Professor and Wahyudi. And we have second question from our colleague, Kelvin Iskandar Putra from Friends and partners so would like also to thank uh, the government, especially its task force for the dedicated work to bring Indonesia to the gradual uh, and optimistic recovery so far. And also would you, uh, can you share, he asked, can you share the government's, government's plan for strategy addressing the data entry delays? Uh, if you can also confirm, I would like to know if it's still happening, uh, that the case is even lower lower now. Um, yeah, in the in the regional uh, government, what, what, what will be the plan and strategy to solve the issue? Okay, thank you for the appreciations, which uh, we all together can uh, control the, uh, the wave that has just struck uh, Indonesia. But in terms of data, it's always dynamic. Uh, of course, during the peak, our concentrations of, of, of course, to give care, good care, to the people who are sick. And potentially, there were some delays in data entry across Indonesia, and we uh, have been, uh, you know, cleaning the data to make sure that the data that, uh, for example, the active case, which is more than 21 days have to be deleted because that's uh, whether they're recovered or they die. And uh, there are some areas that have, uh, you know, cleaned up the data with the national data to synchronize the data. And uh, at this moment, as you can see, the uh, reported uh, cases in Indonesia, that's the reflections of the current situations. And we want to make sure that the uh, system of that we try to uh, achieve, which is interoperable uh, systems in terms of data entry 
and uh, reporting uh, into maximum. But of course, mm -hmm. with the 514 districts and cities across Indonesia, that's always a, a challenge. But uh, if we compare to the last year, uh, you know, today is far more uh, better than, than before. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Professor. Um, yeah, another appreciation from our uh, colleague here, Peter Fanning, uh, that this has been uh, all, as I followed during the PPKM Darurat, the emergency PPKM, it has been difficult and concerning uh, period for for this wave of, of cases. So thank you again for your difficult uh, that you are undertaking. As for myself, I have uh, one bit of question. I believe this has been mentioned by you yourself, as well as I believe the health minister that Indonesia is preparing a plan towards facing COVID as an endemic. Uh, I wonder if this plan uh, or guideline or guidance would be made into like legal or, or official uh, instrument if it's if it's a law or if it's a government regulation can we expect that and uh will this also include the plan for border control that i believe many foreigners are and colleagues here are also concerning yes uh of course when we make the roadmap of transi uh, uh, transitions from the pandemic to endemic we try to make sure that uh, our policy really maintain the low uh, cases in all time, which is now is the best example where the restrictions, uh, the, the multi-layer uh, restrictions have worked very well. And uh, when we want to go to the endemic, of course, we will accelerate while also to make sure that the break is ready. So that's why uh, carefully we will open the social economic activities while looking at the impact. If there is no impact, we can accelerate more. But if there is a uh, health impact, then we will reduce the acceleration. And whether that's going to be governed by a new regulations, we don't know yet. But I think with the current uh, regulations that we have, the multi-layered one, it's, it's proven effective. And also with the uh, frequent uh, uh, coordination uh, meetings between the central government with the local government and uh, dividing into uh, Java Bali uh, uh, controlling or management with mm -hmm. outside Java, uh, uh, Java Bali. And that's proven effective to make sure that the cases are under control so far. Thank okay. you. Okay, yes, thank you very much. Great, uh, great explanation, uh, uh, Professor. Uh, is there anyone else and the participant would like to ask, probably directly, because I haven't got another uh, question on, the, on our chat room? So, any team would like, if there's no, I believe uh, this would wrap our session so thank you very much uh, especially professor for making our time with the gfcc again we are looking forward for our next uh, briefing uh, which we will also hopeful for for more uh, improved situation as as uh, people are also optimistic uh, towards uh, facing better uh, situation next year as well Okay, thank you. Uh, it's me and GFCC that are facilitating this uh, press conference for the international media. And we are grateful that uh, we can communicate uh, each other so that uh, it's clear our uh, government policies. And we hope still to maintain the relations so that uh, we will be transparent always to give uh, updates on the COVID-19 handling in Indonesia. And we hope the best for the world to conquer the COVID-19. Thank you very much. Uh, wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.